gone through with, we know we're gonna be discussing some TED things, but we, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention that uh, this isn't the only instance uh, in which there have been debacles and interesting things going on with TED. Uh, if you'd like to know more, uh, there is a, uh, a speech tomorrow with Suzanne Taylor, Beyond TED and Materialism. Uh, we recommend you check that out for more discussions on TED. Uh, as far as these gentlemen are concerned, it's been a year since this controversy has sort of uh, come and uh, a lot of things have transpired since then. And uh, I think it'd be really great to hear the good things and the interesting, and maybe the bad, uh, all the things that have transpired since then. So I was wondering, uh, perhaps Dr. Sheldrick, if you'd like to start, if uh, mm. you wanna just give us a synopsis of What's been going on as far as you've been concerned since the since your um, video was pulled? Yes. Well, the the immediate effects of this were um, dramatic. When there was a huge viral protest on the internet that um, I hadn't expected. I was traveling with my wife Jill in India at the time. This all blew up, and I was out of internet contact for several days. We were in a remote holy town in Madhya Pradesh called Maheshwar. I got onto the internet and suddenly I got all these emails from people saying, we support you, we're behind you, don't let them censor you. I didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, uh, and by the time we got to Goa, uh, the situation had become a little bit clearer. Um, and uh, I just got back to England. I'd only been back for a day or two and I had this email from the curator of TED, the, the guy who runs it, Chris Anderson, saying, uh, dear Rupert, can we talk on the phone? Can I call you? So I said, sure. So anyway, he rang me up. We had a long conversation. Um, and he asked me to work with him on solving this problem. And I pointed out it was not me that had created the problem. That <laughs> Gra <laughs> Graham and I had been uh, speaking in a TEDx event in London called Challenging Existing Paradigms and we'd actually done what it said on the label. <laughs> <laughs> At the time that it happened, uh, just for a few days, I felt very bad about it. I felt very, I felt, I felt kind of victimized, you know. But I, my first thought was, this can't be allowed to be shoved under the carpet this this has to be this is what ted want they want it they want to exercise this was an exercise of power they were they were demonstrating manifesting and exercising their power and my first thought was i don't want this to be hidden i want this to be in public view and therefore at that point i i had only started to become active on on facebook really a few a few months before but i got about 12 hours advance notice that the talks were going to be taken offline. Um, I couldn't find Rupert because he was in India, but, <laughs> but I, I put out an announcement on my, on my author Facebook page and my personal Facebook page saying, this is going to happen. Would anybody out there who knows how to do this qu please quickly download those talks and re-upload them on, on YouTube if they got taken down? And, this produced a spectacular reaction. Uh, people all over the world downloaded those talks. And <laughs> so, so when Ted took our talks offline 12 hours later, they were already back online all over, all over YouTube. And then the, the, uh, the, the popular voice against Ted became very strong. This was, the, 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 it became very clear to me uh, that the internet hates censorship, it detests censorship. And this was an act of censorship. Of course, Ted tried to spin it as not being an act of censorship, but they immediately started to get bombarded with, uh, with, with, with emails and, and communications about their behavior and about what they, had, the, what they had done. So suddenly I found that that word friends on Facebook, it actually means something. Yeah. <laughs>